Hi and welcome back to freesciencelessons.co.uk. By the end of this video you should be able to describe what's meant by irradiation and by radioactive contamination. You should then be able to describe the hazards associated with these and finally you should be able to describe the precautions we can take against these hazards. Over the last few videos we've looked at radioactive isotopes. Remember that these decay and they emit radiation from their nuclei. We saw that radiation can be ionizing, in other words it can form charged atoms called ions. Now there's a very big risk linked to ionizing radiation and that is that it can increase the risk of cancer in humans. So we're going to start by looking at irradiation. Irradiation is exposing an object to nuclear radiation, for example alpha, beta or gamma radiation or neutrons. A good example of this is for sterilization, in other words to kill bacteria. Lots of medical equipment needs to be sterilized and in many cases this is done by heating. But some objects cannot be heated, so for these we use gamma radiation produced from a radioactive isotope. So here's the object to be sterilized, in this case it's a syringe. We've placed this inside a sealed plastic wrapper, that's to stop bacteria entering after we sterilize the object. Now we place the object near a radioactive isotope that emits gamma radiation. That's inside a lead shield to protect workers from the radiation. When we withdraw the internal lead shield, this allows gamma radiation to irradiate the object. The gamma radiation kills any bacteria present. Now one key fact that you have to learn is that when an object is irradiated like this, the object does not become radioactive. That's because the object only comes in contact with the radiation, but not the radioactive isotope itself. Now, as I said before, ionizing radiation can increase the risk of cancer. So, people who work with radioactive isotopes have got to take precautions. The first precaution is shielding to stop the radiation. We saw in an earlier video that different types of radiation have different penetrating powers. So, alpha radiation, which has got a very low penetrating power, can be stopped by wearing gloves. However, beta and gamma radiation are more penetrating. For these, we can use lead. For example, in this lead apron. However, with high levels of radiation, a lead apron may not be enough. This man's working with nuclear fuel. He's protected from the radiation by lead walls and by a screen made of glass containing lead. Now, another way we can reduce exposure to radiation is by using a radiation monitor such as this one. Now, this does not stop radiation, but it can mean that we can measure how much radiation has been received. If the person has received too much radiation, we can stop them from working with radioactive isotopes. Remember that with the radiation, you are not contaminated with the radioactive source, so you yourself do not become radioactive. Okay, let's look now at radioactive contamination. Radioactive contamination is when unwanted radioactive isotopes end up on other materials. Now this is hazardous as the radioactive atoms decay and they emit ionizing radiation. With radioactive contamination, you now have the radioactive source on you or in you, and you could get a large dose of radiation. Now the level of hazard depends on the type of radiation emitted. Alpha emitters can be very dangerous as alpha particles are very strongly ionizing. However, alpha particles are easily stopped by dead cells on the skin surface. There is one way that alpha emitters can be very dangerous, and that's if they're inhaled, for example on contaminated dust, or swallowed, for example on contaminated food. Now the alpha particles crash into living cells and damage their DNA. Beta particles are less ionizing than alpha. However, beta particles can easily penetrate into the body where they can damage cells. Gamma rays are only weakly ionizing and they can pass into the body and then out again, so they're usually less hazardous than alpha or beta radiation. Now over the years, scientists have explored the effects of radiation on humans. It's really important that these studies are published and then shared with other scientists. This allows the findings to be checked. Now scientists call this process peer review and it's important that you learn that. Remember that you'll find plenty of questions on irradiation and contamination in my revision workbook and you can get that by clicking on the link above.